Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzeca from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. The start of the first round of the 88th Masters. A little bit delayed this morning as weather swept through Augusta, Georgia. But now in full swing, three players currently tied at the top of the leaderboard at three under, including Eric Van Ruyen and Ryan Fox. Tiger Woods set to tee off later today at 254. College basketball news. Kentucky will continue its search for a head men's basketball coach. CBS Sports reporting this morning that Baylor head coach Scott Drew has declined the Wildcats. He will remain in Waco and coach the Bears. In transfer portal news, Tennessee forward Jonas Adu has entered the transfer portal. According to a report by On3 Sports, the 6'11 Adu was an all-SEC forward this past season. He joins Toby Awaka, DJ Jefferson, and Freddie DeLeon as Tennessee players to hit the portal. Also this morning, the family of O.J. Simpson announced via social media the news of his death at the age of 76 due to his battle with cancer. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Boy, this is one of those days. Where do you even start? Blaine and Mickey powered by all four seasons garage doors. The Masters is happening right now. They had some bad weather this morning. I guess it looked there like it looks here right now. But then they got that cleared out. Blaine, they're just golfing it up in Augusta, Georgia. Um, so that's going on. The draft is two weeks away. So draft speculation is at a frenzy. The juice, O.J. Simpson. Oh, yeah, he passed. And he I passed away. He um, there was... I don't follow the juice on social media, but there was a post that somehow crossed my timeline recently, probably a couple months ago, and it was him in his car. And he's someone asked him about hospice. Yeah, hospice. I ain't in no hospice. I'm not in hospice. I don't know why anybody. And then two two months later, he was gone. Uh, prostate cancer, apparently. Oh, really? I, yep. I didn't, I didn't so know. the juice. Uh, he did something crazy on uh, social media live, like maybe a year ago. I forgot what the topic was. It was sports related, but it was some crazy you know, opinion, it was way far, you know, left. I don't know what he was, it felt like he was on some, I don't know. But uh, he seemed like he was, uh, you know, comprehending everything. But uh, it was, I think he was just trying to get some noise for people to start following him. This made it a while back, maybe when he first got out. I was like, what is he doing? It's like, what is somebody doing calling me at this time? <sighs> yeah, never fails. And it's right. always somebody you know, right? Yeah, Who knows what, what we do. I get the same phone calls. Okay. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I can't say that I would purposely call people sometimes like when, when they're on air or, you know, during a TV interview. I, I, I'm I'm infamous for doing that to Charles Barkley, right where he's on air, just to see if he'll text back. He'll, he'll text back, too, <laughs> after the break. It's, it's like, dang. Man, hey, man, you, you looking real cool and sliding in that uh, suit, man. You, you, you losing some LBs? Oh, I'll, I'll text him stuff like that. Oh, he probably likes that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell him he's, he's a like, good golfer. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, I definitely won't do that. <laughs> I'm not saying that, man. As long as he's been golfing, he should be way better by now. So, uh, uh, OJ, uh, complicated legacy to say the least. I, I will say this. For those of you who are young or you don't remember, OJ Simpson was – an unbelievably fantastic football player. I mean, he won the Heisman Trophy. He goes to the Bills. They didn't really use him. He was wearing number 36. And they get a new coach in, oh, change dude. what they do, start handing him the football. He goes for 2,000 yards in 14 games. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had 23 touchdowns that year, which was also the NFL record. Um, what year was that? Do you know? 73. You I was going to say, yeah, because I, I don't remember any of his career. Yep. You know, when I, you know, Actually, after all that uh, craziness in 93, you know, the court dealing, uh, you know, there with the investigation, with the, the killing of his, was it as his then wife or ex-wife at the time? I'm not, I can't even remember. I think they were exes by that time. Yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't even, uh, yeah, cause that was so early on in my life. I, I, I didn't even recall him. So, uh, but then, you know, you hear the conversations and you try to go back and, you know, learn some history about him as a player. And he, boy, he was one of the best to do it uh, to be honest uh, during that era of time there were not too many people that was better he was i i, I remember i mean i i never saw him play i wasn't old enough to even you didn't get a lot of bills games on tv oh you did no 
And the Bills weren't typically good, so it's not like they were on Monday Night Football or anything like that much. But occasionally you get OJ on TV, and he was a bigger running back for his time. He's kind of a bigger guy. Mm. And you've always kind of warned people, like, don't say he's got Olympic speed. Don't. He had sprinter's speed. Not, not Olympic level. He was big and fast. OJ was big and fast. And so uh, he was big enough to so run. He was up. like Bo Jackson. Yes, he was. Probably yeah. not. He wasn't I don't as know. powerful, oh, but as fast. Yes, he was fast. Okay. And he was okay. a bigger guy, so he could run over you or he could run around you. Or if he got in the open field, he could outrun everybody. <laughs> but he was just this, for all the attributes you'd want a running back to have, especially the, the way running backs were used in those days, he had all those attributes. And so he was going to be the next Jim Brown. He was the guy that took the baton from Jim Brown. Okay. And there was kind of a gap in between because he had three or four years during his career, sort of like Derrick Henry, where they just he didn't get much usage, didn't have a lot of carries or anything. Uh, All of the damage that he did was basically in five years of his 11-year career. Most everything he did happened in about five years. And he advertised orange juice and boots and Hertz rent a car. See, that's where I remember him broadcasting yes. and running through Hertz. Uh, running through the airport. And so that's what I'm like, oh, man, who is this guy? Yes. I, that's when I first, you know, heard of O.J. Simpson. And he did a good job uh, even broadcasting. He was, he was pretty good. He was. I think man. he was briefly on Monday Night Football even. Yeah, so he was, he was pretty good. Was a broadcaster, uh, the most charismatic guy. He was in movies, and he was in yeah. the the – the Naked Gun movies with he was oh. Nordberg, I think was his name with oh. Leslie Nielsen. Funny like police movies, oh. but he was in a bunch of stuff. Um, well, a bunch of stuff in some of the wrong way too. But yep, oof. and all that, all that took that a turn is, later on. But is. he was uh, in the seventies. He was on top of the world. He was as big a star as there was. He was a, he was a huge star for mm. being great at sports, and also he sold every product you could sell. Mm. So, and then for a bunch of you. You know him as something completely different. So, O.J. Simpson, uh, 74 years old, I believe, uh, passed away today of cancer. Then this is something else. So, we're just kind of hitting you with everything we got. There's a lot going on. Jonas Adu uh, in the portal, the report has come out, I guess, mm. right before we're going on the air. Somebody said this in our chat a couple of days ago. They did. They Remember said that? the next one. Said, uh, it, it, it was real simple. It was Adu, Adu going to be next, something like that. Mm. I give credit to who said it. But apparently, uh, Meshach's mom, I guess, is still tw- tweeting about. Well, it. I don't know if she tweeted, but she did about uh, the the other kid, uh, Awaka. I don't know about Adu, but uh, you know, man, I, hey, man, I'm I'm a little stunned. I know there's other bigs, and you know they're gonna get another player, but you know those, you know, Adu had improved drastically. Now, was he where you wanted him to be? Probably not, especially when you got to see him against. The best big in college basketball, uh, he fell short. <laughs> but man, why can't we make it a teaching moment? I would have. I, I get it. You have to one game to win. Mm-hmm. But he 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 took him out and never put him back in in the second half. He never played again. Like I needed his fouls. I, I don't even care. Even if you can't push him out a little bit further, let's foul him then. I'm gonna use your fouls. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him what to do now. If you can't. You know, push him out the box a little bit further and make it a little more difficult for him. Uh, that's Edie. Um, then we'll do it another way. Uh, I needed his body and I needed his foul. So I know Estrella did really good, and you know he fought and gave a great fight and and actually did a better job. Uh, so you know, Walker, I thought did a, the best job he could do was pushing him out, and he because he was a little more powerful, more compacter. You know, he's six eight, so. Uh, and now both of those guys are are leaving. That uh, man, but that's the way of the world of uh, college basketball, really. At this day and age, man, that's just the way it's going to be. You better be ready. So all you got to look at as a coach is you say, okay, well we got another spot. Mm-hmm. Less who's on the list and who we're going to be targeting. One, two, and three, and start ranking them. Anybody you guys uh, interested in? Yep. No, Mickey said something about some Arizona guy, right? Yep, Bayo from was, Arizona. That was your man, Nanners, who said that yesterday. He's He's been scouting the transfer portal, Blaine, yeah. even well, out west. I'm, you know, I'm going to keep it real, guy, whether you like it or not. I'd be very cautious on you guys as fans on thinking you're going to get an elite big. And you say, oh, well, why would you say that? Tennessee is great. They are great. Name the last big that was developed and turned into an NBA drop draft prospect under Barnes. 
do you count Grant Williams as a big? No, he's six five. Come on, guys. Then no. There's nobody. And see, I think that's what's going on here. It's he's a guard driven type of offense, what he does. They don't even run plays for their bigs. That's why I'm saying this. They don't run plays for the big. And you can say, well, because they're not good enough. Well, you can still run like a handful of plays throughout an entire game for your bigs. I don't care it, it, multiple ones. It doesn't have to be the same guy. Uh, so I, I, I just, if you're observing and you're a big, those are the things that they are looking at. Then mm-hmm. how many touches will I get? I get I'm a defensive guy and I'm a big guy, block, rebound, all those things. But I'm not going to get touches. And you, well, here's what I'd be selling. Well, now that Connect and some of our guys are gone, you will get touches. What do you, what, are you sure? I haven't seen it in five years. Um, so the guy I was talking about is Omar Bayo from Arizona. And, and you tell me their 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 numbers, their stats. Yep, uh, thirteen average thirteen points a game, ten rebounds and a he's game. Legit. If I'm him, I'm going to UConn. Oh, yeah. See, mm-hmm. see, it, that, that's what I'm saying. This is what you're competing against. Yeah. See, if I that want, guy's getting touches. <laughs> and I'm going on the national scene. And guess what? I may get to be part of a three-peat. Yeah. They, That's an easy sale. It's easy. They run that beehive of a cement mixer of a thing. Ooh, and then and everybody's, everybody's coming, touching the ball. Everybody comes out of it. And then whoever gets, if it's three-point guy, he gets his shot. If it's. And odds are you're not going to win a three-peat. I, I'm just saying the odds are. Has it, yeah, besides UCLA, right? So, but you know, you're going to get some touches. Because at the end of the day, guys are trying to get stats to get to the promised land, the NBA draft lottery. And you're trying to move up the board and not down the board. So I just I think it's going to it's, it's going to be interesting. They bet they better make some promises to some of these guys to make sure they get them. Well, one thing about uh, Adu is he's also entering the NBA draft. So he's doing both. What? Like, so in college, you can do both. Yeah, I know. I saw LeBron James' son did that. Yeah, so. I was like, huh? So Adu is he doing. He play. So Adu is doing both. He's going to do the draft <laughs> process, and then he's also going to test transfer portal. You know, jo- um, <laughs> Josiah Jordan James and Vescovy have done that for the past couple years. What a time to be alive, Look, Remember man. when you tried to bring up Adu was going to be. I said, Adu is not an NBA player. He just. He's just a good big. I mean, there's 50 billion of the dudes out there. And that guy's like that. gonna that guy's gonna kill it in Croatia one day. Though. Yeah, uh, he'll average 18. He should go over and, there with Plachik. He, he, uh, he, he, he just won. He just won MVP of the week. If last they would have, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. If Plachik, if they had him on this team, now he would have got EDF out of there. He was not playing. If not, he would have used his fouls. All five of them. <laughs> they tried to stay on the floor for yep. a six mm-hmm. if he could have. They needed the right mindset type player. Yeah, he was going to get his. Uh, all right, we've gotten ours in the first segment. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, Masters is going on. Ooh. Our buddy, uh, Coach David Head of Treveca, he's the director of golf there, also great at talking the game and breaking it down. He's going to call us next. We'll get a full Masters breakdown as the tournament is underway. The rain is gone. The dudes are on the course. And we'll get you all the latest uh, coming up next on Blaine and Mickey, powered by all four seasons, Garage Doors. David who? <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of diagnoses out there, and there's a pill for everything. But not all diagnoses are accurate, and not all pills are good for you. Hey, it's Blaine Bishop. When you get a diagnosis for European Auto Repair, get a second opinion before you make a major decision. And at Eurofix, the home for second opinions, yes, they are. Before you spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on European vehicle repair from a diagnosis, go to Eurofix. And it could not only save your vehicle's life, but could actually save you from a lot of stress that ruins your weekend. And life's too short to get stressed out and angry. So be happy and go to Eurofix. And at Eurofix, you get a free 15-minute no-rinse inspection with an estimate at every visit and not high-pressure sale tactics. And at Eurofix, you get a three-year nationwide warranty and a free loan of car with every repair appointment. And at Eurofix, you never pay dealer pricing, and they're located all over Tennessee in Franklin, Hunted Oaks, Murfreesboro, Belmead, and now Mount Juliet. And all you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX, or you can just visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. I always tell them playing, sit you.
any better. Blaine and Mickey, 1045 The Zone. Hopefully this weather will move out soon. The weather has moved out at Augusta, and it looks nice. I don't know about They're nice. rolling right now. Oh, windy. Let's talk some golf. Uh, we haven't checked in with our buddy Coach David Head uh, from Treveca Golf in too long now. We met him a couple, three years ago at the Zone Golf Tournament. He just started breaking down the Masters, so we thought, we're just going to track him down wherever he is. We'll talk to him again. Coach, how in the world are you doing? Good afternoon, guys. It's a great day for a pimento cheese sandwich, isn't it? Ooh, oh, my. man. I, mm, I am hungry, too, man. Hey, Blaine's been talking about hunt, being hungry, and then you bring up these fifty magic hungry, angry. pimento cheese sandwiches. I, I just want to know, Coach, how is the Masters dodged inflation? You know, everything else is 70 times more expensive or whatever than when they first started serving that thing, and it's uh, it's still a, a buck fifty, and still the best, huh? I think they're doing just fine financially down there. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Uh, all right, well let's let's get to this. Uh, I guess we can immediately rule out Ricky Fowler, right? Since he won the par three tournament, because nobody ever wins both. So it's, I'm sure it was a fun Wednesday, but it's also the kiss of death. Yeah, you know that's a jinx, I guess, that the guys believe in and have has been going on for a long time. I don't think anybody has ever won the par three and gone on to win the tournament. So. I've heard stories of guys purposely losing the par three, so uh, so they weren't affected by that supposed jinx. One hundred percent, I'd be tanking that thing. Uh, let me ask you this, <laughs> because just being a golf fan and not being a guy who can play at, at all or very well or anything, I love the Masters just because nothing ever changes. You win, you get a green jacket, and you have the ceremonial start, and the holes look the same to me, and. I just love that about it. As a guy who's really given his life to playing and teaching and coaching golf, what's your favorite thing about this tournament? Oh, boy. There's so many. Um, I've been blessed to have, have uh, been down there for the Masters to attend, um, and there are so many great things. The history, the tradition, the golf course itself, and just the whole atmosphere is incredible. But, um, you know, Sunday afternoon – Masters week, watching it on TV. Um, you know, there's there's not a lot of sporting events that are better. I, I've been I've been blessed. I've been to World Series games. I've been to things like that. And to me, the Masters is is the best sporting event out there. And it's just an experience. I mean, just going is awesome. But you know, there's so many so many great stories over the years and so much great history. It's hard to pinpoint just one, but. I think just seeing the golf course in person or if you ever get an opportunity to play it, boy, that would be awesome. Hanging out with Coach David Head. He is the director uh, director of golf for Treveca and uh, talking all things Masters with us here on Blaine and Mickey. Well, David, uh, I guess tell us how this wind and this weather not only is going to affect, I guess, how you play the course, but what is the strategy behind it all and how much experience do you need if you're a first-timer in the tournament or have an experience when this has happened on this particular course? Yeah, it's such a demanding golf course uh-huh. in perfect weather conditions. But when you get wind and you get – you know, some challenging weather conditions, it just becomes even more demanding. And I think that favors guys with experience. There are just places on that golf course where you just cannot hit it. And there are places where you have to hit it and in order to be able to score well. And obviously the guys with the most experience kind of know where some of those places are. And so I, you know, given the weather conditions today being as windy as it is, and I'm not sure, I think it looks like the forecast for the next couple of days is going to be pretty good down there. So I think today if if the new guys can just kind of get through the round and, and don't shoot themselves out of it, then um, I think it can be anybody's tournament. But if, um, you know, if somebody who doesn't have quite a bit of, or a lot of experience around a place like that, boy, it, it is extra hard for those guys so i you know i think um anybody is still early on and anybody can win it there's a lot of guys that are kind of under par pretty early in the round but Mm -hmm. um we'll see we'll see how it transpires throughout the day Mm -hmm. any prediction on uh i guess what the scores will be if you want to put a bold prediction out there of you know under five i mean not just today and a bad day but just the score in general on this you know course that is uh brings a lot of issues when the weather changes yeah, you know, I heard the chairman of uh, Augusta National, uh, I guess in his interview, I guess it was yesterday or maybe Tuesday, was talking about how the course on one day was going to play over 7,600 yards. And for 
those that aren't necessarily serious golfers, that is a long, 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 hmm. physically demanding golf course. So, you know, historically, there's never been super low scores there, but there's never been super um, high winning scores either. So they kind of usually keep it somewhere between, you know, eight or ten or nine or eight or ten under par up to about sixteen or seventeen or eighteen under par. So that's probably the window where it would be. They have so much control over the agronomy of that golf course and they can change it and they can speed the greens up when they need to um to make it more difficult or less difficult and and um so i anticipate somewhere between 12 13 14 under par being the winning score and um historically speaking i think that's probably been pretty pretty accurate year in and year out mm. just like all the other athletes they've gotten bigger stronger and naturally their clubs have changed over time but in this don of uh, golf i guess uh is it better to be a ball striker or a putter <laughs> mm. well that's a great that's a great question and i'm a little bit old school i believe that you know the old saying that you drive for show and you putt for dough. I believe that. <laughs> um, um, I believe that is an actually a very accurate statement. So, uh, I, you know, if, if given the opportunity to to pick and choose which uh, I'd rather be, I think I'd rather be a great putter. Um, I think you can still play the game of golf, hitting it an adequate distance around any golf course. But boy, the putter is a great neutralizer. If you can putt get the ball in the hole, um, then you can play well on any golf course. Mm, head of golf. But it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to be a bomber either. So, yeah. you know. Either way, right? David either Edwards. way. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with Coach David Head, uh, Director of Golf for Treveca. So, Tiger Woods, always a story. He hasn't played much competitive golf. Obviously, all the injuries have taken their toll. Everything gets scooted back today. Uh, so, his you know, maybe his schedule is thrown off. Maybe he has to finish around tomorrow, whatever. Can he physically hold up well enough to golf his way to what would be number six? You know, I'm, I'm a few years older than Tiger mm -hmm. myself. And, um, you know, the older he gets, the harder, the more physically demanding it's going to be, especially when you've got some of the injuries that he has um, sustained throughout his career. Um, you, you can't put anything past Tiger. He's liable to do anything. He's liable to go out and play really, really great. But I would say the odds are that he won't put himself in contention. But goodness gracious, I mean, he's obviously one of the top two best players in the world of all time. And uh, you just can't put anything past him. But it, it's just such a physically demanding golf course, way more so than than any other golf course that those guys play week in and week out. Um, just to walk it and to get up and down those hills, those hills are huge. And the physical demands of playing off of side hill lies and un uneven lies and the mental strain, it's a lot. And, you know, it's a lot for somebody who's in peak physical condition in their, in their prime age of 25 to 35. So somebody who's getting close to 50, you know, that's a lot to ask. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think if he does not get his complete round in today and he gets a chance to rest overnight and go back, come back and finish tomorrow, that might help him. But at the same time, he's got to play more than 18 holes tomorrow if that's the case. So it's going to be fun to watch. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful because he's a needle mover and he always makes it more fun to watch when he's playing well. But that's, that's a tough ask for somebody who's, who's kind of beaten up like he, ha he has been and like he is now. If somebody had told you at the end of 2014, you and I are going to visit again in a decade, and Rory McIlroy will not have won another major by then, would you have believed him? Mm. No, no, he's too good. It's amazing, you know. And, but golf is funny. It's it's a it's a fickle game. You can have several things clicking in your golf game, and one part missing, and and that can keep you from from being the major champion um, that he wants to be again. So. It's a hard game. Everything kind of has to fall into place at the right time. Um, the game is getting better and better and better. The guys are, you know, just there's so many guys out there that can win. And so in my opinion, I think it's a little bit harder to win majors nowadays just because there's so many guys that can win. Mm. But Rory is such a fantastic player. And if you ask me that question, like you said, 
I, I would have said no way in the world he's going to win probably multiple majors over the last decade. But he he really hasn't just he hasn't gotten it done, and I don't know that anybody can pinpoint why. But he, but it's going to be fun watching him over the next decade to see if he can continue to add to that total that he has. Uh, sure will, Coach uh, David Head, director of golf for Treveca Men's and Women's Golf, hanging out with us now. Uh, David, yeah, yeah, we have uh, Taylor H here off the chat, and and I'm curious too. I haven't been watching all day, uh, but he says, why is Scheffler not uh, featured here in the group for coverage? Has he teed off yet? Or where is he at? I think, he, yeah, I think he has. I think um, I'm not sure what Taylor's watching on, but um, I think he's teed off. Um, I think I saw he was one under par through four holes last time I looked, but uh, I'm not sure why it's on not on the featured telecast on the Masters app. That's what I've been oh. trying to catch a few winks of today, earlier today, but uh, I don't, the, the TV telecast doesn't come on until later, as, as far as I know. Man, you know what I get a little perturbed about when I'm watching golf? I have no idea how the hills and where the ball and where the hole where they, you know, I know they show the arrows, but they don't show it enough for me. I need to see how it lands and what they're trying to do. And then, you know, then everything looks flat when you're on TV. So tell us other things from watching it, being there and then watching on TV that you can't really see from a, you know, a fan perspective when you're watching. Yeah, it's, it's, first of all, it's a huge piece of property. I mean, there's so much room around the the perimeter that you don't see. And so it's a hilly place. There's obviously the famous water, uh, water features on the golf course, Rays Creek and, and that type thing. And so it's just beautiful. But I would say the biggest thing for people who have never been there and the hardest thing to pick up on when you're watching it on TV is just the hills and the severity of the greens. I mean, there's hills that you got to walk up and down, uphill number eight, the par five, is a dramatic uphill hole the whole entire way. Nine is back uphill for the second shot, but which is which is extreme. I mean, they're severe, severe hills. But you get onto the greens and just the slopes and the mounds and the undulation in those greens. Obviously, you can pick up some of that on TV, but the severity of it is hard to pick up. And sometimes those guys are having to putt in you know 90 degrees away from the hole just because the ball is going to break back towards the hole. So. Being there and seeing those guys in person hit those type shots is really a lot of fun, and that's probably the one thing that you just can't pick up on quite as much when you're watching it on TV. Well, two part question here: Twenty uh, first timers, uh, who's the uh, long shot first timer that you think got a shot, and then who is your prediction? Uh, you know, uh, Nick Dunlap has some connections here to Treveca. He's got some family that have been here involved in in Treveca's history and so he's always a favorite here at Treveca and after having won um tour event a couple weeks or a couple months ago as an amateur that's always a great story and fun fun thing to follow so I'd like to see him do well as a first timer and then my prediction for this week is going to be Matthew Fitzpatrick he doesn't have a ton of experience at the Masters but he's got some major champion uh, championship experience he's won the U.S. Open uh, he's won a U.S. amateur, and so he's proven to himself that he can win in the big-time moments, and, and he got off to a pretty good start today. So I anticipate he's going to have a have a good tournament, I look forward to watching him play. Trevecca, head of golf, uh, David Ed. All right, on the way out, I just, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. What ultimately happens long-term with Liv and PGA? Because mm-hmm. it always seems like West Side Story, like people imagine them, you know, squaring <laughs> off in the locker room at each other. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a tough situation. I, we all, as golf fans, want to see the best players in the world competing against one another. And when you've got some of the best players in the world competing on a different tour, um, they just don't get to compete often enough, and that unfortunately lowers TV ratings for some tournaments because not all the best players are there. And so it's a big mess. And obviously you have the hard feelings between the guys that stayed and remained loyal to the PGA Tour versus the guys that chased all the money and went to the Live Tour. So over the course of the coming weeks, months, years, there's going to be some relationships that are going to have to be repaired uh, if this thing is going to go forward successfully. And I think they're working on that. I think the powers that be who are making the decisions 
really do want what's best for the game of golf. And what I, in my opinion, the best thing for the game of golf, competitive golf at the highest level, is to have the best players in the world competing as often as possible against one another. So, you know, I'm obviously I don't know much of the behind the scenes. I don't know any of the behind the scenes conversations with that. I just know a little bit about what's going on in the media. But uh, I think I think they're working on it, and they want to try to come to us the best solution that they possibly can for everybody involved. All right, on the way out, Coach, uh, Music City Invitational coming up soon, correct? That's right. This is coming Monday and Tuesday out at the Hermitage. People want to see some good golf. What do they need to do? We're looking forward to it. Yeah, that's um, some of the best um, Division II college players in the east half of the United States are going to be competing. Um, we're hosting. Trevecca's hosting 13 teams. Um, 8 o'clock shotgun start each day at, on the General's Retreat Course. We'd love to have some people come out and watch and certainly support the Trevecca Trojans. Yes, sir. Hey, we know you're busy. Uh, I understand you were even checking in from a tournament. So thanks for the time today, and we'll chat again soon. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. No Appreciate doubt. it very much. Yes, sir. Have a great day. Thank you so much. The director of golf. He's not just a coach. He's a director, David Head of Trevecca. <laughs> All right, we'll pivot from golf to football. There's one guy, I always read Jim Wyatt's mailbag. There's one guy he get asked, he gets asked about the most in this draft. And there's, oh, there's, I didn't even look at it. Uh, Bowers. There's a mock Bowers. draft out there Bowers. to give all of you what you want and even make some other people happy. I'll tell you all about it next. What are you talking about? I'm telling you. All right, uh, sports world is a buzz right now. Golf tournaments and NBA and NHL about to start their tournaments and baseball in full swing. And guess what? FanDuel is your spot to bet on every game that there is. That's because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets, and that's guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. You can bet on anything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. You name it all. And you can do it all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So what are you waiting for? It's your time now. Visit FanDuel.com slash Mickey and make your first bet an automatic win. You can do it. FanDuel.com slash M-I-C-K-E-Y. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You do got to be 21 or up, though. Present in Tennessee. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as not withdrawable bonus bets. It expires seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. If you've got a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line 8 one 800 889 
crap, I almost failed. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. We should just run a poll and just say, how many of you want Brock Bowers? Yes, I, I don't know. Everybody talks about Brock Bowers. Everywhere I go, people, they ask me, who do you think they're going to take? Hard to love them. I'm like, man, they really need <laughs> offensive linemen. They need pass rusher. They need defensive linemen. They need mm-hmm. guys up front on both sides. Guys up front. They're like, what do you think about Bowers? So, <laughs> they don't even care. It's almost like you didn't even say that. <laughs> yeah. So that's a wants versus needs argument right there. Yeah. Because, well, I guess they need a tight end, too, but they really need. He said we need tight ends but just you, yesterday. Yeah, but you really need a left tackle. Yeah. And, and, and a right, and a and right, right tackle. tackle. <laughs> Although it sounds like Sadiq Charles may be your right guard after yesterday. He, well, where, where's, where's Brunskill? As a role piece? Maybe Brunskill. I don't know. I, I I don't think they're concerned about another guard. I, they got to find a couple of tackles. Oh, no, no, no. They got to find those bookends. I thought that guy was a utility player. At, like, he could play everywhere. So Well, they said nice things about him. Like, maybe he's going to be in the mix with Brunskill. Didn't he play a little This, this is kind of like spring. He played everything. Yeah. Spring ball. Everything's nice and fluffy, it's right? It's nice and fluffy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. everything about UT, Vandy, it's always nice. Who's doing well? No negativity. There's no games. Yeah. So that's what the NFL, this is that time. It's a fluffy time. Yeah, yeah, Sadiq yeah. Charles is fluffy right yeah. now. Was he a starter in this league? He started games last year, yeah. Well, yep. No, I say, is he a starter in this league? Not yeah. did he start some games. Is he a starter? Not one you want long term. With Bill Callahan coaching him because he's fluffy too. <laughs> So Who's fluffier around that. here right now than Bill Callahan? Oh, That's no, the no. fluffiest oh, no. of fluff. I mean, all the coaches, especially they're, they're new, yeah. uh, you know, here. And he's a first-time head coach. So, man, hey, man, I, I appreciate everything they're telling us, man. I, I feel like I'm right there in the front row in the team meeting room. Well, yeah. Mickey, if It they, was exciting. If they take Brock Bowers, they're going to need to take some of that fluffiness and put it behind Will Levis for when he gets sacked. Well, as Blake has pointed out, okay, take him. He's going to be kept in the block so much to help whoever the tackle is on his mad. side. Throw it to Brock! Why has he, he only got 32 targets this year? Yeah. Well, Gennaro Felice. He's an NFL.com yeah. reporter. Gennaro Felice. <laughs> I wish that was my Felice? name. No, Navi died. died. <laughs> Merry Christmas. He wants to wish you a Merry Christmas if you're a Brock Bowers what fan. Say? His thing is Titans and the J-E-T-S, <laughs> Jets, 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 swap 7 to 10. The Titans get a 3 out of the deal. The Jets have pick 72. Their third is pick 72. So you get pick 72 and only move back three spots. I don't know of anybody who wouldn't sign that. Yeah, because you could still, so even if you want to do that and go after offensive linemen, I'm pretty sure Olu Fashano will still be there by 10. And if he's not. Especially if you like Fashano better than all. I, I would take it. Ten times right. that. I'm and sure then, some people say on the upside he's yeah. better. And then if he's not, it. you have every defensive player right there. Every one. Except for maybe, maybe Dallas, Dallas Turner. Turner. Who might go, he might be the one who's he gone. He might go at eight, at eight with Atlanta. I've seen him mock mm. there a couple times uh, since they got their quarterback now. Mm. So swap seven for yeah, ten. Get pick 72 out of the deal. And then he had them taking. Dun, dun, dun. What's the music that goes to this? I love that music. I wish I had written that, by the way. Yeah, uh, I loved it, except in 93. <laughs> I don't even know if they had that music then. They had some. A bunch of people smoking in a hotel ballroom. Oh, uh, no, no. It was, yeah, it was they were Radio City Music Hall then? Oh, yeah. They okay. were, they, yeah, yeah, they were. I'm saying. thinking of the 80s. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. And then taking Brock Bowers. He has him taking him at 10. Brock Bowers at 10. So, do you guys remember? 10. You guys remember when we went through Cincinnati's tight ends usage ever since the, uh, Brian oh, Callahan yeah, yeah. was Mickey their was offensive the one with that, yeah. their offensive coordinator? Yeah, they had too many catches. Right? It was not a lot of usage. Not a lot of usage. No, I think the the, the max shocking was amount like of non usage four hundred and eighty yards. I think was the was the max yardage. Was that that Azuma guy? Uh, it was either CJ Azuma, o- yeah, o- Uzama or uh, no. Hayden Hurst. One of the two had the had the most. Oh, it was, yeah. oh, it was one like of those Hayden two. Yeah. But yeah. Like 480 yards. And I liked Hayden Hurst. I mean, I like Me both too. of them fine. But Hayden Hurst, big athletic rascal. Yeah, He, both he was them. a first-round tight end. Oh, was he? I think Hayden Hurst was. He was late South Carolina, like, right? Like a late round. Lonzo think. says deal. I mean, Lonzo listens every day. He's fully engaged in this, and he says deal. I would do it. Deal I, with I, Brow, Bowers. I, he, I know the deal. Said, you know, the pick the and swap and yes. the trade. I, I, yeah, I'm all in on that. Oh, man, I don't know, man. I would do it, but don't draft Bowers. Draft. 
Wish I knew. What if Bowers is the highest rated player on their board at that time? What if he's the highest? Because it's what? What does Coach Max say? Horizontal, horizontal, and vertical. Your board is like a skyscraper. It's stacked yeah, all these different. And I'm gonna tell you, the next time you say it, I'm gonna say, "Well, you made me look cross-eyed, so I made the wrong pick." <laughs> The highest rated player. Highest or, rated player at any position. What if it's Brock here's Bowers? Here's a part that everybody's missing. Every year, that means something different. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, the highest rated payer, player is Marvin Harrison. Why didn't he go in the first pick of the draft, everybody? He is the highest rated player over quarterbacks and everything. Because that's, that that ba- that's not what the Bears need. Yeah. Right. See? Right. See? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, <laughs> If you still can take the number one guy on your board at that position. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a team like, let's just use the Chiefs. Now you can afford to go for the highest player on your board. Regardless of position. Regardless, right, because we got my homies. Yeah. He can cure out of all of this. So it's different situations for different teams isn't the same when you're saying the same thing. So I, I, you know, I just don't people. I don't think people are, Lonzo, are understanding that. Lonzo is listening. He said, "Oh hell no, I'm picking Bowers." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, it's hard not to. The guy is a phenomenal player. Where, hey, where have we been saying all along? Where's he going? We know probably it. middle of the first round. Two, who has pick fifteen? Indeed, I, I know it's going to pain me. You know they're going to take him. I know they're going to take him, and then we're going to have to face him every year, twice a year. Well, what He's would, going to Indy. I, I would almost be willing to go. They have the 15th pick, right? Yes, and and bet money on that happening. So if the Titans. They don't even need a Titan, do they? Don't they have uh, two guys? Remember they had a converted basketball guy? They have what? And, and, and Mo Allen Cox else. on their roster? Yeah. And it, I think he's the converted basketball guy. And they had somebody else. They're solid. I mean, they're not. <laughs> they don't get it wrong. They're not Bowers. And we don't have a Bowers either. Uh, Mo Alley Cox, uh, they have. But I, I'm gonna tell you this. Gosh, they got. I wouldn't be they mad. Got like if eight they got tight ends on their roster. This is insane. Hey man, I. I but they don't mad. have any wide receivers. Jelani Woods. I wouldn't be mad if they took. Oh, Jelani Woods. He was a. Uh, he was a rookie last year, wasn't he? Yeah, I think yeah. he got hurt. Yeah, yeah Woods. He no, was no, no. He's too. not last year. He's, he's full size. He's, he's six seven. Yeah, man, I'd have to cut his legs off. <laughs> well, I'm aiming for the logo on hey. the tongue of his shoe where it sticks up over the. Because your shoe's got a tongue. Uh-huh. I'm right over the top of the tongue. If it says Nike right there, that's where I would try to hit him. Chop uh-huh. the tree down. So did you go over the I guess we're gonna go over the rest of Jim Wyatt's uh I guess draft possibilities. Well this in, this, in this wasn't even his. Now we can do that when we come back. We can hit you with the latest it's Jim mock Wyatt drafts. mock draft roundup. Absolutely we can do that. And in the two o'clock hour, here's what we're gonna do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh Blaine asked our man Jordan DeJani this yesterday. Best wide receiver room. In the AFC South. Bananas has done some digging. Top three. Top three receivers. Yeah. Although when you see the Texans, well, beyond top three, you're <laughs> going to be like, what in the world happened? <laughs> if they so, draft another receiver, I'm going to be mad. We're going to do that at 220. They cannot take another receiver. That is off limits for them. So watch them take Bowers. Uh, so the Texans. Oh, my God. The Texans. Indy, the Jags, and the Titans will go through those receiver rooms. You will want to hear this and stick around and participate in that. That will be at 220. But. Let's take a quick tour of the Jim Wyatt Mock Draft Roundup. We'll do that next, and it is a master scoreboard time, too. We'll tell you who's doing what in Augusta. Now that the weather's cleared up, it's Blaine and Mickey, powered by all Four Seasons Garage Doors. Yeah. Allergy season is upon us, and pollen is in the air. But fear not. Cool Ray has your back. And your $49 tune-up has your HVAC system running smoothly, keeping allergens at bay. Plus, enjoy $10 off indoor air quality products for an extra boost. So are you ready to say goodbye to your old HVAC system? Well, with Cool Ray, it's out with the old and in with the new. And we'll give you... 
$1,000 on your old system when you upgrade with us. That's right. We'll pay you to breathe easier. And with Tennessee's unpredictable weather, it's crucial to be prepared. That's where your whole home generators come in. With $1,500 off, you can keep your home powered up, rain or shine. So don't let Mother Nature catch you off guard. Let Cool Ray be your beacon of reliability. So Tennessee, are you ready to embrace spring with confidence? Give Cool Ray a call today and let us make this season a breeze. We're your partner in comfort no matter the season. So here's the spring filled with sunshine and smiles and stress-free living. Cool Ray, keeping Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. So visit CoolRay.com to take control of your home's comfort. That's CoolRay.com. Below MSRP, below MSRP, below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two Rivers Ford sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP.
Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone studios. It is 2.01. I'm Joseph Bonanno. More news for Tennessee basketball this week as junior big man Jonas Adu announced that he will be entering the transfer portal as well as declaring for the NBA draft. Adu averaged 11 points and 7 rebounds en route to an all-SEC honors in 2024. He also joins Tobey Awaka, Freddie DeLeon, and DJ Jefferson as Vols to enter the portal, leaving six open scholarship spots for Rick Barnes and the Vols. Sticking with college basketball this morning, Matt Norlander of CBS Sports reported that Scott Drew would not be taking the Kentucky job and will return back to Baylor. Norlander also broke just a few minutes ago that there is a 0% chance Dan Hurley leaves UConn for Kentucky, saying that they could offer $20 million a year and he still wouldn't go. The Masters at Augusta National Golf Club is currently underway, taking a look at the leaderboard. Ryan Fox is currently in the lead at 5 under through 12. Bryson DeChambeau is right behind him at 4 under through 13. This morning, the family of O.J. Simpson announced the news of his death today on social media, posting this statement. On April 10th, our father, Orthmall James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, the Simpson family. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once in your home for the Titans and Balls. This is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone, powered by all four seasons garage doors and trust matters. We can trust you guys to download that Zone app so you can take us wherever you go or to rate, review, and subscribe to the Blaine and Mickey podcast. That way you don't ever miss anything either way. And you can hear everything again on repeat. Uh, Ryan Fox, the leader at Augusta, minus 5 through 12, had three birdies and an eagle uh, early on in his round, uh, Bryson DeChambeau is second at four under. Uh, then there's a group at two under, including Scotty Scheffler, who's the number one right now. But a lot of people saying, come on, man, he's got one slam. Need to see some more from Scheffler. Cause Scheffler oh, you've got fancy headphones on. Yeah, somebody, somebody left him over here. So I'm oh, just uh, doing a burp. Ben Jones was in with Buck today. And- oh. He was using those, so boy, those are you could hear anything on those, dude. I feel like I'm in a tunnel right now, <laughs> man. This thing is wow, my little cheap old earpieces. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Mr. Big Time Headphones over there. Oh. Uh, Jim Wyatt with this big time mock draft <laughs> roundup, the latest one. He should have another one out soon. This drops every few days, and then it, he starts putting more and more people. This is the eighth tour of the mock, so. Oh. Uh, what got us talking about this was uh, an NFL.com writer with a really cool name uh, put out his latest mock and it had the Titans trading with the Jets. The guy's name is Gennaro Felice. No, uh, he died. 100%. Uh, he has the Titans swapping, this is just for entertainment purposes alone, swapping 7 and 10 Titans and Jets, which I think, how many, if, if you ask 10 Titans fans, are you okay with switching from 7 to 10 and getting a third-round pick out of the deal? That's why you pros. How many Titans fans out of 10 do you think would say, I'll take that deal? Uh, nine out of 10. I think you're right. Yeah, nine. It's, it's always going to be like, nope, I'm sticking to stand. I'm taking Bowers. Right. <laughs> oh, no, man. I, you can't take a chance on missing Brock Bowers there. You're going to have to get he, him. He may, he, 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 it's two more picks, man. No, I can't do that. No, this kid, but, uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, I would definitely do that. Um, he has them swapping seven and ten. The Jets send their number, their third round pick, which is number seventy two, over, and then he has them taking Brock Bowers. So Blaine brought this up. Let's just see what the all the NFL experts uh, are saying. All these guys at Jim White, and this thing again, it starts to grow over time. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get to the the thing he even asked us, you know, like everybody gets to throw their pick in at the end. Oh, I got to figure out what I'm going to say. Yeah, one year, no one year I picked Christian Fulton, and then they took him in the second round. Oh, I got the pick right, but the oh, round yeah, wrong. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We but a lot there, of people, yeah. they were kind of mm-hmm. led to believe he could be taken yeah. in first. So I got the pick right and the round wrong. I don't know how often that happens. It wasn't my proudest moment, but I was kind of half proud. So here you mm-hmm. go. He pulled so 30 people. 
How many of 30? I counted this up in the break, and this is unscientific because it involves math and me. How many people of 30? Drop it in the F and M bank chat. How I'll give you I'll give you just a couple seconds. How many of 30 NFL experts? This is Chad Reader, uh, Mike Tannenbaum, Maurice Jones Drew, Tom Fernelli, uh, Bucky Brooks, all these people who you read their stuff and see it. How many of these people do you think? Picked Joe Alt to the Titans. Out of 30. 22. Mm. Yeah. It's just going to be a high number. Mm. 20. 21. Right, oh, in, right between in between these two. Yes, both of, you are, yep. both of you are technically correct. Somebody said 25. 27. People, I, there's a little bit of a delay on this, so people are just getting my question. Uh, 27. Cap said 26 of 30. Uh, Zombie says, I agree, 27. So most people believe they're taking Joe Alt. The longer this goes towards the draft, the more I kind of talk myself out of Maybe they won't take him. Oh, the, these next two weeks, you're going to be going round and round. Then you'll come right back to where you started. And you know me, because I obsess over these. Oh, like, yeah. I, I, don't like that. I read a mock draft, and it proposed this, and this makes a lot of sense. So, so I just actually did a mock draft while you were uh, reading that. The Jets traded me 10 and 72 for 7. Okay. Uh, they went, so Joe Walt left, at, got picked at 6 to the Giants so in this draft. You don't even have to worry about that. So anymore. I traded back. So guess who the Jets took at 7? Olu Fashanu. Wow. J E T S. Brock Bowers went to eight to the Falcons. Oh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> what? That doesn't make sense. Oh, somebody and then needs Roma to Dun- computer about Then football. Roma Dunze went at nine to the Bears. So, now what? So I'm sitting here at 10, and the top three are JJ McCarthy, Dallas Turner, and Terry on Arnold. I don't know who draft. I guess I would go Dallas Turner. Boy. What do you say, hit man? Mm-hmm. I'd feel kind of pantsed at that point. It's kind of funny that the Jets offered me that. Yeah. Mm. Well, As we were talking about know, it. We're all being watched. Yeah, I know. Mm, that would be, yeah, that Dallas Turner. Just yeah. roll with it, huh? Get the yeah. best pass rusher available in the draft. We asked Coach Mack, who's the best? He said Dallas Turner. You get the number one pass for edge guy. So. Hey, yeah, man. You win. You fit, and you got a third-round pick. And, hey, and you would get him at 10. Normally, he's going to go much higher than that. The number one pass rusher in most drafts would be right up there with quarterbacks and left tackles. Uh, Real Mike Jones says in the chat, Dallas Turner is the easy. He said East, but I think that was the typo. He was the East pick, meaning easy. All right, 21 of 30, Joe Alt. Two for J.C. Latham. Two for Dallas Turner, and this was with no explanation of seven, or are they trading back? This is who did they take in the first round? So it's stick and stay. Stick and stay is the way we'll interpret it. One each for neighbors. Amarius Mims. I would rather have Mims over Latham. Okay. I'm with you. I agree with that. Texas defensive lineman Byron Murphy. Got mm. a pick by, by and that was... Mm. Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News. He D tackle or, or edge? He's a defensive tackle. He's he, an inside yeah. guy. Yeah, okay, because he was the other guy. Texas has some players. No wonder they beat Alabama. Yeah, no doubt. Byron Murphy and then Tavondre Sweat. They had three the, receivers. Yeah. They had a running back that's considered to be the best running back. Uh, I'm like, dang, didn't they just grab a running back last year? Yeah. Robinson? Two. <sighs> yeah, they. Yeah, hey, some dudes. After hey, man, watch out, SEC. It's going to be fun to see Texas in there because mm-hmm. they recruit, recruit, recruit. So, Amarius Mims, well, he gets one. Byron Murphy, one. Brock Bowers, one guy picked him. Andrew Erickson of Fantasy Pros. And Olu Fashionu got the other mm-hmm. of the other nine that weren't the 21 who picked Joe Alt. If, Jake, Joe, mm-hmm. I, if Joe Alt is there at seven, I, I'm just – Stick and stay. Stick stick and pick Joe Walt. Don't overthink it. Just get it. Now, if he's gone, because I know a lot of people are thinking Chargers, uh, the way Jim Harbaugh's been talking, just what we know about Jim Harbaugh, um, and I know they need skill position players badly, but it's Jim Harbaugh. He's a weird guy. He'll do it. He'll do anything. Um, if the Giants take him, because I've seen Giants go anywhere from skill position to quarterback to offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. The Giants, to me, seem like the wildest of wild cards oh, yeah. in this deal. Yeah. Nothing that the Giants would do here would surprise me. If Joe Walt is gone, I would try and trade back. 
like, like regardless. If you can't find a trade, then I would stick and pick one of those top wide receivers that are probably still going to be there. What if Alt does go to the Chargers? So that means one of the receivers is available. Mm-hmm. Probably and, Romo Dunze. And, yeah, exactly. And he was, he's kind of been my guy. Yeah, I told you, you'd go right back where you started. That's where That's you started, started right there. <laughs> and just because the si- thinking of... I've got two I, weeks to torture myself. And man. I'm just thinking of Cincinnati, and, and because that's all I have really to base what Brian Callahan's office is going to look like is Cincinnati, is that the wide receiver position is going to be more valued than the tight end position, just based off what we saw in Cincinnati. And I know it wasn't his complete offense. Zach Taylor had a lot to do with that. But that's all I have to go on. And so if I were going to pick either Brock Bowers or one of those top wide receivers, I would lean towards one of the wide receivers for this staff. If the linemen are there? No, if the li- if, if Joe Alt's gone. Oh. Like if, if Joe Alt's gone and they're picking and they're sticking at seven mm. and, and they're gonna go one of the go somewhere else, yeah. I would lean towards wide receiver there. Mm, me too. I'd take neighbors. If he's there. Yep, that is yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh but if I had my way, I, I gotta get a tackle. As great as Joe Burrow and everybody knows I, I like Joe Burrow, uh, uh even over Mahomes. He is having injury issues because of the line. So there's also, there was a lot into that decision when they made the Jamar Chase deal. It was, they had went three years and the linemen they selected were not very good or just okay. So I think that's, and then the Titans could say that's two years that they did that. But in honesty, it was really one and they signed a free agent guy. So somewhat similar would lead you down a decision, you know, so. This one here, it'll be interesting to debate, but I think you got to go tackle if he's there. It just it pains me. It's not exciting. But, man, if they don't get this thing fixed, it can wreck Will Levis. And I mean wreck because I'm tired of seeing him get wrecked. Yes, last year, that was that was absolutely horrible. If you got your... If you just get one of them, yeah. I, you can find a way to piecemeal the others, you know, yeah. other side or the right tackle with the guys they got. So that isn't immediate. I'm sure they still want to upgrade that too, but they they got to get this. They get they got to get a left tackle. I don't care if it's in this first or the second round. They if they have if the best tackles available. Mm, yeah, somebody if that doesn't work out, somebody gonna be in trouble. Yeah, when I talk about trouble, I'm talking about on the hottest of hot seats. Uh, Brian and crew. And yeah, Will that, Levis. That, they better get that thing because they got to protect him. They're gonna get him killed. He already got annihilated last year. Well, I was gonna say he'll be on the hottest of IRs because yeah. he he will get killed. Yeah, man, he was. It was tough sledding out there, man. So I get it. You can throw the quick game in the in the Bengals, and you could say Callahan was part of that. They had some quick game type receiving going on. That's what I wanted the Titans to do. They never did that. They were long ball happy because that was their style of offense with the new coordinator. You know, quick game can slow the pass rush down because they get tired. Mm-hmm. And so they keep saying, oh, I took two steps and then dang, I had to turn and run him in the ball. Uh, two, two again, two steps. I'm never going to get a sack, man. Dang, they ain't keeping the ball long enough. Then you come back and go one, two, three, four, five and ying. See, there's, there's a lot of nuances to the game that can help you with your offensive line. So that's why I'm not opposed to them not getting one. But in that second round, since it's a deep draft, you know you're going to get a good player, and you got to depend on Callahan to develop him into a really good or Pro Bowl level player, which I think potentially can happen. So you go wide receiver, Bowers, or whoever you like on your board, and then go to that second round, it's guaranteed you got to get a tackle. Here's what we're going to tackle next. Uh, best wide receiver room. We're talking top three, but we may take a peek down the rosters a little bit further as well. Best wide receiver rooms. One, two, three, four. Top of the room, especially in the AFC South. Uh, where we are right now. This is before the draft. This may influence who you want to draft once you hear some of this stuff. Uh, we'll get into that next. But first, Banana says it's time to give something away. Time to give away mixed ticks again. I am giving you a chance to win tickets to some of my favorite artists and shows thanks to the Window Nation ticket window. So here's what we're doing. Caller 5 now wins a family four-pack of tickets to see the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway on Sunday, April 21st. This is going to be a banger, man. Caller 5 
Four pack of tickets to see the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway Sunday, uh, April 21st. Window Nation ticket window open now. Call her 5 737 1045. Summer and warm weather just around the corner. Just think if you were playing in your weekend, you were headed to the lake. Wouldn't that be magical? Maybe you just want to live up there all the time. Well, here's your chance. Limited number of lake lots being released to the public. That's coming up soon, Saturday, April 20th. This is resort-style lake living at a fraction of the price with financing available. Uh, wooded estate lots, two acres. That's a big spot right there at the lake. Uh, lake cottage packages uh, and lake lots with your own boat slip. And they got a marina, and they do concerts there by the water and walking trails and shoreline and a giant clubhouse and coffee shop and pickleball. All your lake dreams coming true, all about 20 minutes from Knoxville. Just a short drive to the beautiful Smoky Mountains as well. Why not call and secure an appointment? Times are limited. Your chance to make those lake memories that you know you're dreaming about. Limited property release, Saturday, April 20th. You can visit us now, Lake livingtn.com or call and get one of those limited appointments to see this magical place 865-408-9992 memories start here
Riding. Hate to talk over this. I love this song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've played this song probably 5,000 times. It makes, me, it makes me feel good when I pick a, a song. a bathroom on the right. It makes, mm. <laughs> it makes you feel good when I pick a song and then you guys don't talk for a little bit just because yeah. you're enjoying it. It makes oh. me think I did good. Anything yeah. by CCR is just undefeated. Oh. That's, that's what he was saying. There's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just humming it. <laughs> well, he says there's a bad moon on the rise. Oh, on the rise. Oh, oh there's okay. a bad moon on the rise. Oh, so you tricked me, there's man. There's a bathroom on the right. Saying that. John Fogarty's still out there playing today, man. All of our, we have, we must preserve our older rock stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got to preserve the Stones and McCartney and John Fogarty. They're still out there doing it. The guys are still out there touring. So uh, mm, hope to yeah. see John Fogarty again soon. I've seen yeah, him once. It. Need to see him again. Oh, they're kicking it. Straight kicking it. Uh, who's kicking it in the wide receiver room in the AFC South? Our man Bananas. So Blaine brought this topic up. And then Bananas went and he got a full scouting report here. Boy, did he. This is in his handwriting. In depth. Uh, he passed Rhett Ryan with us in the hallway, and Red informed him, you know, you could copy and paste things from <laughs> what's, what's that? What's all that writing? Because Bananas is like, hey, man, here's a copy of this for you. Red said, what is that? <laughs> so it's this pride project we're working on. He goes, you know, man, you could copy and paste stuff off the internet. I love it. I, I just, when I I'm researching, it. I'd rather write it down. I love it. I love it. Rather, I'm, I'd much you rather copied write and it pasted it your own writing. And then, I made, and then I, guys, I made you each a copy of my yep. sheet. I've got I, the original in here. Your writing's easy, pretty easy good. Easy to understand, very clear, concise on the writing. I don't have to guess at any of this. I had a couple mistakes that I had to write over, but uh, down at Downs, I accidentally wrote Pierce first. Okay. On That's Colts. okay. Well, uh, well we okay. can still That's see Downs. Yeah. You know, but it's being picky. Uh, Davis, you, you messed up on the S. Okay. All right, you can join this discussion, 615-737-1045. Uh, if you want to uh, weigh in on this, but here you go. This is... Obviously, ahead of the NFL draft, this is post-free agency, although there's still a few guys floating around out there, especially safeties. Mm-hmm. Blaine thinks one of those guys will wind up here. Just If they don't get him in a draft. But you can't play the, the late-round guy. Yeah. If he go out to the fourth, I don't know. So here you go. Um, Titans, Texans, Jags, Colts. Although it's funny the way uh, our man is writing here. It looks like Jugs, <laughs> but it's Jags. I didn't finish the A. That's fine. Uh, I preferred that they're the Jugs. They're going to need some Jugs machines if you once you read this list. The Jags probably will need the Jugs machine uh, to get people going. Okay, how do we want to start this discussion? Blaine, it was your topic. Bananas, you did a fantastic job it's of our topic, researching man. and writing. <laughs> how... Who do we start with? Let's start with the Titans. I'll start with the home team. Yeah, let's oh. start with the home okay. team. Okay. So do you have up top, is this the the total amount of stats by these guys from last year? Yes. So, okay. I, yes. I, so I went in that and I looked at each roster uh, for this year, and I basically compiled their top six wide receivers. And I know Blaine was looking mostly at the top three, but mm-hmm. I wanted to see the full depth of the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got their tw- and yeah. I got their 2023 stats as well as how many games each uh, player played. And then at the top, I have what that would be as a team for that position group for, you know, so like for the Titans, for all their top six, what that would mean as a team for them from the wide receivers. Boy, just just right off the top, catching my eye here, the Titans' two top receivers, one of them was somewhere else last year, obviously, in Ridley. They both played 17 games. Nobody else has that. Well, on the Titans. Yeah, uh, nobody's top two of any team. Oh. Nobody's top two. Colts are close. Yeah. They're close. Oh, yeah. They're close, but nobody mm-hmm. else did it. Mm-hmm. So, Titans, let's let's start with this. Top three, Hopkins, Ridley. <laughs> just, dum, like, dum, dum, dum. just like you draw it up, kids. NWI. There you go. He's like uh, this dude. You and, and Watch this. He had 370 yards. That, watch it. That was, a, that was down from the year before. It was down. He had four, like, he had almost, had, he almost had 500 yards. Yes. Guys. He had like 478 the year before, I think. Because <laughs> we looked at that, too. It's like, this dude is, say what you want. Yeah. Don't make him a one, Titans. Don't make him a two. I mean, he may have to do that when guys miss time. But if he's a three or a four or a five. Yeah, he is. He has all the attributes to do that for as long as he can do it. Mm-hmm. He's 
big enough. He's fast enough. He plays special teams enough. He catches the ball for the most part when they throw it to him. You got to find a reason not to dress him. 100% you do. <laughs> you NWI. Mr. And Consistency. I, yeah, I, I, I love it. I last love year it. that reason was when he got hurt. Yep. So Hopkins, 75 for 1,057 and 7 TDs. Ridley, of course, in Jacksonville, 76 for 1,016 and 8 TDs. I mean, essentially the identical stats almost for those guys. And mm. uh, one of the things, and Blaine and I have talked about this a whole lot over the years when we've been together here, what did the guy do against the Titans? And Ridley just destroyed mm. the Titans. Was it like... 200, o- it was over, over 200, 200 yards, yards, three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. He had an 18-yard carry. Yeah. Everything he could do, he did against the Titans. So I'm glad they went out and got that guy. Yep. NWI, number three, 28 for 370, three tutties, uh, and as Bananas pointed out, in 14 games. Mm. No, n- noted distant uh, fourth there is uh, 16 for 221, Mr. Chubby Wubby himself, Mr. Burks. <laughs> Couldn't resist. <sighs> Sorry. Which, and I, I like the guy. A good guy and all. But we about to find out if he is a pro's pro now and ready to, to take this thing on seriously or is he just going to be a non-factor? Because here's what could happen. And, and, so don't get it wrong. And I think there was a reason why his name wasn't mentioned by the head coach. Was not mentioned. Yeah. If they draft somebody in the top three rounds, that guy that's in the third round that they took, oh, the, 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 he's going to be better than Burks, and he's going to be ahead of him. Mm-hmm. So then that pushes him down to fifth. Yeah. Yeah. And that means bye-bye, birdie. <laughs> you better pray and hope somebody tweaks an ankle so you can get some playing time. And then he don't play no special team. He does not. So he, he better be careful here, man. Uh, he better... Uh, he, he better get in the freaking shape like no other. And this current coaching staff uh, and administration owes him nothing. He no. has he nothing to, to do with it. And, and it's just unfortunate. But and remember, you guys laughed at me. And I know, Mickey, you had your stat and we kind of carried it on that he's a slot. I, remember, I kept saying, I don't know what he is. Mm. I haven't seen enough of him because a slot guy is your buggy. Is he just a buggy? I'm, I'm breaking it down. Is he elusive? Is he like Kyle Phillips and Kinsey? Most of those guys return punts, mm-hmm. and they are wah wah, and they make that first guy miss. He's not that. Let's go there. We're not talking about what he did in college. He's not that. He is not wah wah. We ain't seen none of that, even when he played in a limited time. So then that tells me he's outside, and. He definitely not beat neither one of these two. Now, Ridley, you know, they can both move in and out. They can move around, but he's not better than the top two. To me, he's more of a short routes, set him down, and supposed to, just based off size, like run after contact because he's huge. He's like a tight end. He's almost like a tight end. Wouldn't have they utilized him as a short route running guy? They, They haven't. They've never used one I mean, game. He just played and ran down the field <laughs> where he was running deep balls. Yes, he just like I mean, you're a clear out guy. That's all he did. That's all and they did. made Phillips sit. There. Phillips. Remember, I said, laughed. I said, "Oh, that was conditioning game." Hundred percent. That's all he. I was like, I would have been like, "Hey, man, you can condition." I need yeah. Phillips to be in there to catch some passes. Right somebody. This. I, I, I. This is going to sound really, really crazy. I thought wide receivers supposed to be divas. Where is his? Hey, man. I just ran up and down the, on the field, and I didn't even touch the ball. Yeah. Guess what? See, here's how I can go against you or for you. He wasn't upset about that. Sorry. Boop. Bye. I want you to be upset. I'm a first-round pick. They didn't throw me or target me not na- a time in the entire game. Do you think D-Hop would have been upset? Dude, he would have been so professionally with it, too. <laughs> hey, man. We, we got to work out to practice. And, and when I do this, that means I'm open. Throw me the ball. <laughs> when, I put my, my, when I put my fingernail up, that means throw me the ball. D-Hop would have came back. We're not doing that again. Right. <laughs> there would have been some discussions Seriously, on the side. That's then that tells me again. right oh. now he is never going to be a one. Ever. Ever. They always, you can hate them, you can love them. 
the number one to always think they're open and they always want the ball. I'll get you a good team guy. But at some point in time, there's a selfish time when you're at wide receiver and you got to be like, hey, man, he can't guard me. And I I, I don't see it. I, 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 just, I think he's a good guy. He is a good guy. But I need to see good guy on game day turn into dog guy. Mm. And that guy is not barking. He is meowing. And, boy, if he don't get that changed, it, it's going to be – he's going to be standing on the sideline, and then next thing you know, he's not dressing. Because right now, if they draft a receiver from maybe even fourth round and up, mm-hmm. and, and with NWI, he, he would be fifth. And then we're not even talking about the, the Phillips and – other people, now, they may dress maybe one more receiver than they did in Vrabel's era because right. they throw the ball more. Could hey, give man. Phillips another shot at returner now that there's a new coaching staff, too? Me, personally, I would. I like Phillips. I mean, new coaching staff, you kind of get rid of. I mean, I know there's the, the fill, You get a fresh slate. You get a fresh slate, yeah. You, you get, and you got to prove to me that you are who, what they thought you were. Prove it for me. I, 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 and he needs to stay healthy, too, by yeah. the way. But uh, when he didn't have to return, though, a receiver, I thought he did a, a little bit better job. It, and he had the pressure of doing both. But that is the job of a slot guy type player like him. Well, you when know? Vrabel didn't dress him, he goes, why would I dress? Remember? Yeah, he why was would like, I dress a slot guy who doesn't return punts? Yeah, he, they're, they're supposed to do both. Yeah. You're the jitter buggy guy. Supposed yeah. to be the punt yeah. returner. So, yeah. And Kenzie, you know, he was sure-handed. I don't think he's as precise as good as Phillips. But one thing about when you get drafting a you know or you know undrafted guy that comes to the league, he is hungry and he is dog and I'm about to prove something. That is obvious by Kenzie. And the confidence is growing year by year the more and more he plays mm-hmm. and figuring his way of how he can be you know impactful in his own way. So this is this is telling the tape for me with Burks. And we could talk about the injuries, which they all were, were serious. A couple concussions, then the knee issue, uh, then the, you know the oh, you know what was it the asthma in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So it was just been a lot. But at some point, we got to stand up and say, "I'm ready to rock and roll." So this is it for me. I got yeah, I'm I'm I, for me not to know what he is is baffling. Like two with full, that, with two that, full years in, yeah, yeah. With that kind More of talent, that. yeah. With first round talent, that size, do you need to take a book out of? You got the the king right here, and when I say the king, the king of size and manipulate and not supposedly not being fast, he mm-hmm. is fast. Burks from Hopkins, he should be learning all the tricks of the trade. Why can't he be that, or somewhere close to that? That's where we got to get to. And when you got something to see in every day at practice and you, and you still can't get it there, this is that boy, that's that's it. That speaks volumes. Unfortunately. I, and I I love I I like him and I know he's a good guy, but I like winning also. Yeah. Well, and again, this coaching staff, this administration has no ties to him. Yeah. So you it's, know, I mean, it's I hope he, he better twinkle twinkle those those green eyes and get to going. Or gray eyes, whatever you got. Let's get Steve. I don't know what color Steve and the Burroughs' eyes are, but I know he knows, twinkle, he knows our phone number, 615-737-1045. What's up, Steve? Twinkle, twinkle. Funny enough, they actually are green. But uh, just <laughs> wanted to ask, like, you know, I don't know all the X's and O's in football, but I know a good player when I see one. And Traylon Burks has the talent, but, you know, as far as being an outside receiver, he may not be that guy. But – you know, he played mainly slot in college, and the guy is big and fast. So why don't we see more players like that in the backfield? You know, get him involved in the game early with a toss sweep or something. Like, I remember, you know, put, I would always scream, put John U. Smith in the backfield, and eventually they did it. Oh, yeah, they Score off one for 60 and almost a touchdown. So just wondering why we don't see that more. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the phone call, man. So people over here, this is a distinguished gentleman. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Burks is better than Kyrus Jackson. <laughs> See? 
<laughs> the Georgia guy, he got injured, but man, he he was showing out. Um, I, like I said before, I, I don't know what he is. So I, I don't know if they put him in a slot, and I get it. I know it's hard for people to see that pro is so different than college. He did do well in the slot. Mickey laid it all out before they even drafted him, after they drafted him, how many snaps he played in the slot. When he gets the ball in the NFL, he's just an average wide receiver. When he gets those reverses, go back and watch his highlights of when they did do that. He was average at best. And I, I want the guy to do well. I, I Man, he's a good dude. Uh, I, but at some point, it's time to put up a shut up. I mean, come on, man. He even had a lot of carries at Arkansas. They essentially were just trying to hand, just to put the ball in his hands as quickly special. as they could, because he, could he was see. big and he was fast. fast against the guys who were covering him, and uh, they were very intentional about it. All right, we got to. I be mean, the, but he was doing it against Alabama too. Now, was, let, oh, let's no, get it wrong we, now. We, we, we looked it up. Yes, we we saw that he did it on a weekly basis. Uh, we need to see this though and be intentional about taking a break. We'll come back. Take a quick look at the Texans, Jags, and Colts receiver rooms, and we'll tell you who we think has the number one receiver room in the AFC South. That's coming up next on Blaine and Mickey. Better get serious. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Feeling like yourself lately. Maybe you're not feeling like yourself. Maybe you need to do what I did. Call Edge Peptide. They're waiting on your phone call. Matter of fact, you go and see them, and they'll give you this battery of, of, of tests. They'll do some blood work and check in your testosterone levels, your vitamin levels, all this different stuff. And for me, I had lack of B12. Maybe you're like me. You're tired all the time. That's what led me to go in there. Well, for Edge, once they check the levels, and it's all real talk. You'll have a great consultation. They'll explain to you where you are and where you need to get to to feel like you want to feel. They want to make bodies feel better from the inside out. Hormone therapy, that's testosterone, or could be any number of hormones, peptide therapy, whatever it is, they want to make you feel better. Right now, they've got everyday low pricing on testosterone therapy, $99. Bucks. Um, I don't know if you're going to beat that, and you need to beat a path to Edge Peptide so you'll feel better. You can go to edgepeptide.com. Real simple. Or you can call and make an appointment today, 615-724-1878. Schedule an appointment today at Edge Peptide.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone, powered by all four seasons garage doors. When trust matters, do you trust the Titans' wide receiver room? You trust them. AFC South, wide receiver rooms. So the Titans' big three, Hopkins, Ridley, NWI. Uh, Stat-wise, last year, that's the way it stacked up. Burks was number four. Phillips, number five. We moving on to the Texans. Let's do it. Boy, this is as a Titans fan, you'll probably be like, uh, maybe you should take one of those guys in the first round. Uh, Nico Collins is their number one. Titans fans remember him all too well from last year. He was 80 for 1297. He did that in 15 games. Dang. Ooh, he turned a corner. Then they got Diggs. He was 107 for 1183 and eight touchdowns. So that's 16 touchdowns. But remember, he no good. No good anymore. That was in 17 games. Then they have Tank, Tank Dell, who broke his leg, only played 11 games. He was 47 for 709 and seven touchdowns. He's terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. His quickness. Oh, my. I remember watching him at the senior bowl just making dudes look silly. And I mean, really, really. Then there are four, five, and six guys, mm. Brown, Woods, and Mechie, mm. a combined, mm. I'm not going to do the yardage, uh, over mm. 1,000, mm-hmm. and 83 catches. Mm. It's over 1,200. Over 1,200, yeah. Over 1,200 yards. more than 1,000, yeah. 83 catches. That's mm. from their four, five, and six guys. 89 catches. That's a 16 for Mechie, not a 10. Okay. 89. It looked a little bit like a 10. Like a tiny zero yep. instead of mm. it's a tiny, tiny zero. Mm, that's question was there. Okay, so that's enough. even more catches and even more yards. So my quick math uh, afforded it. That's the Texans. Their receiving core, and again, Bananas did top six. Their top six, 323 for over 4,300 yards and 26 touchdowns. They're, they're by far number one. Really, this is about who is number Who's two. Who's number two. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, let's say this. <laughs> Their number six is the only person that had less than Burks, who was the Titans' number four. And Woods had 426, so he had even more than NWI. So their four man, and five it, it, were man. the Titans' number three. And now, Mechie we coming may not back have from... to get down to who pulling the trigger. Yep. He, he turned into, you know, he was that dude. Now... Yeah. The, the Colts is where it's, it gets really interesting. So their top four are Michael Pittman, who just got the big contract. Yep. Josh Downs, who had an incredible rookie year. Alec Pierce, who has been pretty solid for them out of Cincinnati. I'm not going to lie. I thought he would be better. Alec Pierce? Yes. because he, he did have a lot of hype coming around him. He'll have a nice game. Then he disappears for two weeks. Then he's like, oh, man, that, he had a good game again. Then he disappears for two weeks. But as a number three. Eh, 32 for 514. Not terrible. No, no, Especially no, with a backup quarterback. I just And then your number four is uh, DJ Montgomery, who had three for 56 and a touchdown. Now, here's the thing about the Colts. is Outside of those four, they don't have a player on the roster that recorded a stat in 2023. Hmm. Uh, in, in, as a wide receiver. So they have four guys and then, like, five guys who didn't play last year. Dang, so they had no injuries here either. They all played 17 games, except for Pittman, one game he missed. They picked 15. Wow. You think they're going to take some? I mean, we think they're going to take Bowers. I, I do. I'm convinced of they Bowers. Have, I, I feel like they've got to get another weapon for Richardson. Mm, I'm, I'm going, yeah. Huh. Uh, I, I think they're going to take a cornerback. I, I mean, that's Bowers also, are a cornerback. I don't even know who their other corner is. No, I think I look well, at the other their guy draft got needs, injured. Yeah, cornerback is a big need for them, and, and they're probably going to have a really prime position right more. there. Quinion Mitchell will probably be available at fifteen. At fifteen, there may not even be a cornerback drafted yet. Maybe yeah. one. Yeah. So you get the number two cornerback at fifteen, or the maybe the top tight end Bowers. You could get. Oh, who's the other LSU receiver? A lot of people Brian, have Brian uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I mean who had, Thomas. He had eight bazillion touchdowns last year. He he's a guy who seems to be landing in oh, that area. I love him. Like he runs better routes than neighbors, but he and he's faster. I'm like, man, dang, Jaden Daniels was throwing to some dude. And that's one thing, if you look at this list, wide receivers not scored a lot of touchdowns for the Colts last year. Michael Pittman is their number one, only had four. Yeah. What pick are they? 15? They're 15. 15. Oh, I'm either taking a corner or I'm taking, uh, yeah, the, the other re- number 11 from uh, LSU. Oh, he, what's his name? Brian Thomas Jr.? Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah. I like him. I, I, I like him, guys. Yeah. All right. About a minute and a half left. The Jags, uh, Kirk is their number one guy, 57 for 787. 
12 uh, games. 12 games. He had that uh, groin injury. Yep. Mm, was year. it a groin or is it hip? I thought it was a groin injury. Maybe it was his grip. It combined. <laughs> might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Gabe Davis, who the hitman was, I'm not gonna be was, was not a guy that the hitman wanted the Titans to recruit. Oh, uh, I did not. Yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> and his game is he's still like he's the outside wide receiver in the pass happy like college offense. It, it doesn't work. He don't know how to run routes yet. Uh, he played he 17, 17 games. He had 45 catches. And he got some dough for them for that output. Uh, Zay Jones is their number three guy. Let him just kill the Titans. He only played nine games. Washington, nine games. Uh, then there's another Jones. Tim, Tim Jones. So Tim, Parker Washington, Tim Jones, and then Tim, Devin, Duven, Devin, Devin du- Duvernay. Who came over from uh, the Ravens. And he's who, not a – I mean, they don't they – He has like four catches in his career or something I mean, ridiculous. He had four he's catches last season. Yes. Yeah, he's kind of jitterbug running back slash slot. Slash hopefully return. return. Or he's mostly something. their return guy. But, yeah. Um, he has not been yeah, much of an last. offensive guy. Looking at this, to me – the Jags have the worst overall mm-hmm. group because I think top the, to bottom, top yes. to bottom. Actually, I think even top three because Colts, Pittman, Downs, and Pierce, I think, are better than Kirk Davis and Zay Jones. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. So, so I think Jags are fourth. Jags are fourth, and that's bad because you have a guy in Trevor Lawrence who needs some help. The way he's been playing lately. Now, the question is, is Pittman Downs Pierce better than Hopkins Ridley and NWI slash Burks? Does the top heavy Hopkins Ridley outweigh the fact that you have a lesser number three? You know, I don't want to sound homery, but I, I would lean Titans here. Although I really like Pittman. And I really like Downs. Yeah. And I think Pierce can be better. Yeah, you you know Downs' his brothers is freshman all American for Alabama last year. That's his, his little brother. Bloodline. Mm-hmm. His, his daddy played for the Cowboys. All right. You guys start the music because <laughs> it's time for 3HL. Uh, yeah. Titans number two. Texans one. Jags four. Titans two? Yeah. Colts three? I'm, I'm Titans two. I, I'm not being home. I, I just think they're too dominant. Yeah. So if that's true, do you need to draft a receiver then at two or three? Yes, need- just because of the age of those guys. And, you're, and you don't know if Hopkins is coming back. Okay. Boom. Hit on the head, bananas. All right. See, we just solved everything. We'll mm-hmm. solve something else tomorrow. Just wait and see. But we got to get out of here now. <laughs> but in the meantime, in between time.